Welcome to lesson number two, uh, in which we will discover the geocoding mechanism and see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, Bing Maps service. So we start with a simple table of the customer addresses. Each line is a, a single customer and we would like to just visualize the customers on a map. Uh, what can we do? We can just insert a table and then we will try to use all of the information that we have in here to show the data on a map. Let's insert a 3D map and have a look on the field list uh, pane. You can see that all of this information, because we had uh, properly designed and named headings of the table, have been mapped by the 3D map and we should just check that the city is the city level, country is country, region, county, we have the second administrative level for Poland, postcode is the postal code and the state is the state province, street, street. We don't use uh, at the moment the address column, I will show that in a, uh, in a second. And what we will get, we get a lot of information about the customers, we can show them even as bubbles. And when we go to the layer options, we can just change uh, the size of the bubble so that we can work easily on a flat map with our customers. And this is actually the task we have uh, done, but still there are always some kind of problems with addresses and with the data. Uh, and the first thing we will have a look is this mapping confidence um, report where you will see that some of the addresses are missing. I don't know how it is in your country, but in Poland uh, we can write the street name uh, on many in many ways, even if this is just exactly the same address. And this causes a lot of problems for uh, a tool and a service like Bing Maps. And you cannot do actually anything with that. You need to correct somehow the data, the source data that you work with. So the only thing we can do in here is just copy the selected items that we can see, go back to Excel, paste the data in here and try to work with the addresses that were not found to somehow correct the data. This is not the part of this exercise, but uh, you need to go one by one and correct the data to make sure that all of the addresses have been uh, found uh, have been found correctly. This is the only way you can find uh, the uh, problems with your data. Uh, when you are ready, you can always go back to uh, to your map and use uh, the fields that are sure and you can trust them. Like for example, the state to check whether the address has been geocoded in the proper state. Uh, I'm showing this because, uh, for example, in Poland we have just 16 states. And when I'm using this kind of state uh, field on a, um, on a category shelf, you will very quickly see that when I work with my size, I can easily spot some kind of addresses that don't fit to the rest, which means either I have a problem in geocoding process or I have an error in data itself. And this is the way you can in many countries work with the postcodes and the states and try to uh, do some kind of recheck on your data to be sure that all of the data is found and shown on the map in the right place. What if your address has not been split into separate columns? Uh, in the next scene, we can have a look on the uh, full address column that uh, will fit to the full address. And we can also add, for example, country to make sure we are looking the proper country. Uh, but still, this kind of search will give you less results and you can expect many, many more uh, problems with the data. That is why in very demanding projects, you would rather not rely on this uh, automated geocoding process, but prepare the GPS, so the latitude and longitude of your addresses on your own. And this is what we will see in the next exercise.